Malawi is the third or fourth more poorest country in the world. When we arrived in Malawi, we traveled from the north of the country to the very south, and then the east to west. We just ran across the country. We decided to settle in Benga. This is the place that was mostly in need. Poverty comes in education, comes in health assistance, comes in nutrition, and we are trying to work on that. One of our charisms is to alleviate the suffering of the people, to lift up the standards of living and somehow give dignity to, to the way they live. The most clear suffering we see in people is the physical suffering. You see the bellies of the kids because of malnourishment, or you see the elderly that is just pure bones because they are, they are not having any food at all. How you see somebody who is becoming blind, you see one, two, three, so many cases. And people are somehow slaves of, of these diseases that can be easily cured. People plant mostly maize. They use very basic methods. When the harvest is poor, they have less food. Since the produce is less, they normally concentrate on children and maybe the youth. So the elderly people, they're not cared for. They get very little food. Even the houses where they live, they are in very, very bad conditions. Very tiny, some have no windows at all. Some you find that the roof is completely out and uh, no one is bothering. So we started a program. We visit the most forgotten ones of the elderly people. And you find that they are the ones that are sick, the ones that cannot walk. When they age, they become weak. And uh, I think that's when they need us most. They are the last point of their lives. It's our turn to take care of them. When their roof was blown off, this one that used to be like a store for keeping the things and all that, that is what they use now as a, as a place to sleep. But when it rains, the whole of the floor gets wet. Then they suffer from uh, pneumonia and this kind of diseases because of sleeping on the ground. We are using the garden as a way to teach people and the children of the nursery how to produce vegetables. Here we have the goats. These goats are hybrids, and what we do is we change them to the people for the local goats, because these ones are much bigger and produce much more milk, and especially much more meat. We used to have 1,700 students, but less than eight classrooms. They used to learn under trees. They would look at the vehicles, they would be running around while the teacher is teaching, so it was difficult to control. The classrooms which we have behind here, those classrooms were constructed by the parish, and we are very happy. We had a problem here, dropout, high absenteeism. When you call the parents, they will tell you there's nothing we can do. They cannot come to school on the empty stomach. We are also getting other groups coming to come and assist us. In, in a month, we will be able to give food to 13,000 children in school. They will get a plate of simple porridge, but that porridge will help that they attend to school, and at the same time, they will be able to be well focused when they are in class because they have something in their stomach. So that's a source of happiness. The education is the future, and for me, it's the key of the development. Mostly, we want to teach them how to speak English, how to communicate in English. It gives you an opportunity to have something to do in the future for your own life. Mm. 
At the beginning, you may get a bit of stress or you may see how I'm going to do this. But once you see the problem is solved or once you see that somebody is cured or you see that somebody can go to the school and is doing very well, it gives you like peace inside and happiness and it's difficult to describe. Maybe one child does better or a family gets a better nutrition because they have better seeds or access to better farm inputs. Then I feel that, okay, we are on the move. The parish is preaching love. They have taught us to love one another. When there is love, we try to push ourselves much further than even that our strength can allow us. Sometimes we need to come out of our comfort for the good of someone else. There will be a lot of happiness when we all look at what we are able to do together, and together we grow. Giving is not an action that is because I feel good or I need to do it or whatever. It's something that is the other person deserves and is our responsibility. If we set all of us in that motion of serving, of being attentive to the needs of others, then suddenly we realize that there is joy, that there is a life that is fulfilling and meaningful, and we feel strength and power to move mountains and to bring change into people's life. Then suddenly we realize that it's our own life that is changing, and, and we feel an immense happiness and joy.